we just had chiropractic treatment and we got our basilar processor adjusted and that was a really big one. He said he's never felt um, that go so deeply. Um, like it was really loud and <laughs> like there was a lot happening in that adjustment. Um, and Um, and then we did a minor adjustment on the um, vagus nerve atlas through the back of my neck area, head area. And then we did a cranial, uh, a biocranial brainstem lift. And it seems like such a small motion, but it does so much. And so, it affected my visual eyesight and it affected my, what was the other thing I said it affected? Oh, my ability to feel skin sensation. I couldn't feel the air on my face in the room before. <laughs> it appears. Um, and then I could and I could not effectively perceive depth dimension of physicality or the concreteness of my surroundings and I can now. It's not like it's a hundred percent but it is noticeably different from where things were before and so all the terrifying experiences we were going through even though it was experienced through my mind it was coming from my body and these things that were out of place may have also affected um, our experience yesterday where we fainted after eating a cupcake. We went for a walk and then we came back and we brought in some food that my mom had gotten and we had a cupcake. That was among the things and um, we immediately felt chest pains and then a couple minutes later we were our sound changed and we were passed out on the ground unable to move um, and even when we were able to move and try to roll onto our back we couldn't breathe then so we had to roll back onto our side just to keep breathing and it took us a while to get up and then afterwards we recorded um, like 15 to 20 minutes of video observations um, including taking our oxygen and heart rate and our oxygen levels kept dipping down into the hazard area of 92 to 93 percent intake um and so just no, some notes about acc adaptable consciousness condition <sighs> the root of the condition is a dramatic re routed wiring not a rewiring because that means the wiring was there and then it came in and got rewired it's a rerouting of the original wiring um and that affects everything from like heart rate and stuff to like a bunch of other things we have written down in our notes somewhere um just a lot of core pieces of functionality and then from that the cerebellum got rewired and there's two hemispheres in the cerebellum and so they kind of my theory is that that the, there is divergent development where things were just rerouted and maybe the two hemispheres of the cerebellum don't have consistent contact with one another that's one theory anyway um and then from there, the cerebrum got rewired, where the two brain hemispheres, left and right, and then the front of the brain and the back of the brain didn't end up creating the natural connections that exist. And then aspects of consciousness developed on top of that. Aspects of consciousness developed on top of that, and multiple persons were developed to effectively cope with all this divergent development that had occurred unconsciously and continues to be applied unconsciously. And within all of that includes a rerouted wiring of the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems 
within the autonomic nervous system, which is within the, I think it's the peripheral nervous system. There's the central nervous system, and then there's this other nervous system, and then within this nervous system, there's the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system, and within this nervous system, there's the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems, and all of those got rewired, rerouted wiring, divergent development, I mean. Um, and so when I went for a walk, Dr. Lucas' theory was that it wasn't just the cupcake, it was that I was in a sympathetic state of physical activity and then I went and had a cupcake. And for a normal body, the shift in those nervous systems would not be detrimental. But because things were out of place especially, and because my brain wiring has rerouted wiring, divergent development, where the two nervous systems are not in automatic communication with one another on a moment by moment basis. Going from a sympathetic walking stance to an eating parasympathetic stance caused my heart to freak out because the brainstem application of the blood pressure, blood flow, heart rate, heart rhythm, all that stuff um, was just confused. It was just like, we were here, now we're here. Ah! <laughs> um, and so my hearing changed and I collapsed on the ground and I couldn't, couldn't move and I was having a hard time breathing. And this is like a pretty regular occurrence. Um, and so my hope is to write this paper that explains the neurophysiology, neurobiology of adaptable consciousness condition, which is the physical side of dissociative identity disorder. DID describes the mental manifestations of it, which do nothing to help create treatment plans. And so even though I have a DID diagnosis, the majority of my difficulties is related to ACC because it actually explains why I'm having these battles, where it's coming from, and the hope is that with this new neurophysiological understanding of my condition, then more effective treatment routes can be created. Um, and we've already created a lot of that. We have uh, different forms of bilateral stimulation and our work here with Dr. Dr. Luca Music and just a variety of things. Um, and so to present ACC to the world as its own separate diagnosis that is often um, a dual diagnosis with DID, um, explains the physical part of the mental part of DID, um, and to explain the science of it and then how that affects day-to-day -day life. And then once that paper is published, we can work on creating some legit treatment protocols for it, um, including things using bilateral stimulation and um, mirror exercises and um, chanting and things. Um, and we can look into that book that was talking about the healing power of the vagus nerve or something, um, since that plays a huge role in ACC. I think it would be um, a good move to invest in a book like that, even if we take it slow reading it, just to have the option around. Um, and then to articulate the aspects of the left and right brain hemisphere, and then the cerebrum and the cerebellum. And this will help us with our consulting work as we prepare for our next class. Um, gently prepare for our next class. <laughs> I know the facial muscles are much more engaged on the left side of my face. So let me try stimulating my left brain hemisphere. That's okay. I can definitely heal here better in this year. That's this sounds more clear. This sounds distant or not complete or something. Um Yeah. Creating language for indescribable experiences of consciousness. This is really my big goal right now. Um, oh yeah, but then articulating the 
specifics of the neurobiological purposes and then the physical applications of how it impacts everyday life um, from left and right brain hemispheres to cerebrum and cerebellum big brain and little brain um, and then to use that understanding to describe the divergent development of ACC and to use those notes in our consciousness class and um, other aspects of our research would include a more comprehensive understanding of cranial nerves and that'll be a piece by piece thing so don't worry about rushing it it's just one little piece at a time and then maybe in like a year from now we'll understand it all like we don't need to have it all be like right here right now if we do a little little teeny piece a day or once a week even you know 52 weeks from now 365 days from now we'll know a lot I know it's hard to see that down the road and stuff but just know that one piece at a time is more than enough um, and so another oh and a question for Dr. Luca for his interviews is can you tell me about communication between bones muscles and nerves or the relationship between bones muscles and nerves and how that impacts unconscious communication that can play a role in experiences of mental health I think that'd be a great question um and then while we're doing this research and honing in our ACC explanations we'll keep moving forward and playing with creating language for indescribable experiences of consciousness where we focus on new terminology to describe dissociative experiences we don't need to explain why it's happening there's no science in this paper it's specifically explicitly to just create terminology so we can describe what's happening in our personal experience and so it's a personal descriptor describing these experiences and then just coming up with names that feel like an accurate way to communicate them to our loved ones and it really is just to have language to describe things. It doesn't need to magically bring healing on its own. It doesn't need to explain the why or the science behind it. It's really just to give language to these experiences um, so that the, the personal experience can be described. That's it, that's the sole purpose. Um, yeah. And when you don't feel like working, that's okay. It's okay to relax and, and take care of ourselves and stuff. Just make sure that relaxing is tuning in, not tuning out. And when dreams overwhelm you, set them aside. Just let them go.